We want to consider a few shocks to aggregate supply and aggregate demand and take a look at what that might look like in the model. So we've got a couple of um, kind of scenarios that, that could take place and you could go through, I mean, just hundreds of scenarios with chain, different types of shocks to aggregate demand or aggregate supply, short run and long run, and, and think through what those changes would be. This is just kind of to scratch the surface and, and give us a little feel for the things that we need to consider when we're thinking about shifts in these curves. Let's start with the first one. We've got the invention of the internet decreases costs of reaching new customers. So we know that the internet has opened up all types of new avenues for businesses that you could be in a small town and you could sell halfway across the world and that that has really decreased the cost of being able to reach new customers in that it basically opened up new markets so what is one way that we can understand this or how would this look in our uh, kind of in our chart here so or in our graph here so we've got we know that in essence what this does right that this would be and this would be something that improves the productivity in the workplace this is something that improves your ability to reach customers that makes it cheaper to reach customers we know that this is a technology advance that has drastically improved the way that businesses are able to run themselves and so this would be something that we would see in the short run when it's first beginning we would see a shift over here to the to the right right this is something where we would see and I'll kind of mark it here in this yellow we would see this type of uh, and I was trying to do that straight I apologize right but we would see this kind of short run aggregate supply curve shift to the right and the result of this I'm just going to kind of mark this right here right the result of this short term shift of this temporary shift would be a kind of increase in output right we would have an increase we would move to this point in output so we would see a, a real increase in GDP because of this improvement and we would also see a decrease in the price level so I'll mark this as kind of as P2 now this is one of those things that I think is interesting why we start off with this because we also know that this is really a, I kind of said it when we were talking about this is a productivity productivity improvement This is really what we think of when we think about technology advancements and what do we know that happens with technology advance, advancements. Well, we know that that is something that is a long run determinant of output, that that is something that would change the trajectory of output, that it would increase the, the, growth of, the rate of growth of GDP and output. And so this is something that we would also see that would actually shift the long run aggregate supply curve to the right and so we would say long run and I'll just mark that as long run too. This is something where we would see an increase in the long run aggregate, aggregate supply curve because it is a pro productivity improvement, right? This is kind of the technology advancement. And I'll kind of write this here, right? This is like the technology improvement that we've talked about that changes, uh, that changes real output. Let's turn to this second example to really think through what's happening here. So the second example we have OPEC, right? So these are the countries that kind of act as a cartel, and they uh, they hold a uh, almost a majority of the of the world's oil. And let's say that they get together and they choose to decrease. They want to decrease the output of crude oil, and that would have a result of increasing the price of oil on the markets. Um, oil that is used as input prices or input products for all types of things that are created, from like plastic bags, right, to uh, all types of uh, consumer products that are that are used. Uh, all, right, all the way down to kind of gasoline and that type of thing. So when we think about this type of change, this is the type of change that we would typically consider as an increase, right? This is going to increase production prices. And we know that production prices, right? What is the, what is the supply curve, right? Is the aggregate supply curve? Well, that's the curve that we're thinking about how much, uh, how much, how much would be sold, how many goods and services would be produced um, by suppliers, by firms, at any given price level. Well, what is actually happening? Prices are increasing. This is the type of thing where we would see reinforced in the model where the where the short run aggregate supply curve would shift here to the left. This is something where we would see a shift. I can't draw this very well here. We've got the short run aggregate supply curve. I'm going to mark that as as 2. And so I'm going to mark this here because what do we see as a result of this? Well, we would see something in economics that we call stagflation. So one, we would see an increase in the price level. So price levels would be increasing. And at the same time that those price levels are increasing, we would see a decrease in real output. This is something that we call, right, stagflation. 
stagflation was a big issue. It's not something that we've seen in the American economy in a while. It was it kind of came up uh, during the late 1960s and 70s when we started, we were actually seeing a lot of oil shocks in the market as well. Uh, this has been kind of less the case in uh, in uh, I guess more recent. Uh, maybe decades here in, the, in, in America and in most Western developed nations uh, where we haven't seen as much of a dependence on oil as we previously had in the economy. Uh, part of that's just because of uh, kind of changes in the sector and, and we've seen some kind of changes away from manufacturing as well. So we've seen a little bit of a, uh, of a decrease in dependence. We've also seen some improvement obviously in, in the way that we, um, that we conserve energy and, and so th there's just kind of less um, I wouldn't say less demand, but, uh, but maybe a little bit of a flat line of the demand that we've seen in, in more of the developed nations. So a little bit of a side note on that. So this is something that we would call stagflation where price levels are increasing while output is decreasing. So what we want to do is we want to kind of think about what happens here. So we, we can't stop here because this isn't something this isn't something that is a technology change, right? This isn't something that would that would necessarily in and of itself be something that would change long run aggregate supply. This isn't something that would change uh, kind of that level, the, the uh, natural level of output in the economy. So we want to think through what would actually happen here. There's a couple of responses and I think that the first one is, is like the classical way that we would use to understand this uh, this model which is it kind of the thing that we would think here is that the businesses could readjust their contracts. So, uh, so this is the short term uh, effect. As a result price levels have increased and businesses would go and readjust their contracts to lower prices on everything else and as a result, right, we would start to see a we would see kind of a a secondary shift kind of back towards our original point back towards this original point in the in the uh, aggregate supply curve which would keep us here at this long run aggregate supply curve so this first one we'd be thinking about would be kind of uh, we, we could call an adjustment i'm going to call that adjustment in, in the short run aggregate supply back to the right. And this would be again kind of what we were talking about. We, in essence this would be where businesses lower the price on everything else to compensate for this higher price level which would then kind of lower the price level back down on, on wages and on uh, contracts that they might have that type of thing. Uh, there's kind of a secondary response here that we could see, which is the Fed could uh, could try to stimulate. Uh, so this is something that we've been seeing, right? And the Fed could try to uh, stimulate uh, kind of this fallen output. They could try to stimulate it by increasing the money supply or decreasing the the interest rate. And this would actually affect. This is something that would affect the aggregate demand curve. So we could have a Fed response, a Fed stimulus response. And I know I'm running out of space over here on the side, so I'll try to be careful. Uh, the Fed response, and that would actually increase, right? That would stimulate, that would shift aggregate demand to the right. If that were to take place, and let me kind of mark this in green, if this were to take place, then we would see something like this. And, and I'll try to do it the right there so it crosses right through, right? And we'd say this would be aggregate demand too, and this would put us right here at this point, right? There in green. And so we'd kind of see this shift in aggregate demand as a result of of one of those type of policy changes. I will just note that if that if this is the case, right? If they go with this response, uh, then this is what we would actually see. We would see a return to our kind of uh, our natural level of of output. So we would return to the normal kind of growth of the economy, normal output of the economy. However, we would see, and I should mark that as three, right? we would actually see an extra increase in price levels as a result of that response. There's a similar response that we could see there as well which follows the exact same uh, exact same thing here which is we could see the we could see the federal government try to stimulate demand and, and that they might do that through subsidies they might do that through tax credits right and so the and so I'll just mark it here right the government could uh, could stimulate and if they try to stimulate that demand we're going to see the same type of thing here where it's going to shift aggregate demand over here to the right it's going to right whatever it is it might be just extra government spending which would shift aggregate demand to the right uh, it could be something that influences the amount of consumption uh, tries to stimulate consumption on the economy uh, that obviously would increase aggregate demand here as well and that would bring us back to the steady state however it would do it at a cost of much higher prices in the economy so there's two different types of responses here I would just 
just kind of say in, I think in most textbooks you're going to see this is the classical response that there would be normal just adjustments uh, after that temporary. In essence, this is what we call expectations, right? Expectations of prices would change and businesses would adjust their contracts accordingly and shift us back to this so there would be no change in aggregate uh, or I'm sorry in output and we would return kind of to the price level as well because we'd be lowering price levels. Any of these other changes by government agencies or by the Federal Reserve would continue to increase prices as a way to stimulate out uh, or in essence to increase output. Let's move to this third example down here as well. In this third example what we're looking at is the government increases taxes. In fact, we were just uh, kind of thinking about the reverse of this. So if the government were to increase taxes, that in essence, right, that is something that is going to take money out of individuals' pockets. It's going to reduce consumption. It's going to reduce the amount of money that's available for individuals. And we would see a shift to the left of the aggregate demand curve. And so we're going to see something like this. I'll put it aggregate demand 2. And I'm just going to mark this point as well right here where we now cross the short run aggregate supply curve. In the short run, we would see a decrease in output, but we would also see a decrease in prices. In that short run, right, this is kind of where we run back into this original explanation that we were looking at here, which is, so what would happen in the long run? Well, there's nothing about this that's a technology change. There's nothing about this that would change kind of uh, kind of long run uh, the ability of the gov of the of the uh, of the economy to produce goods and services. There's nothing about this that would change uh, the the amount of output that we should have, right? So the natural level of of output would remain the same. And so what we'd be looking for is something that would get us back to this point. So there could be offsetting uh, aggregate demand shifts that would shift us back over here to this point and that would increase the price level. You could think about changes in the Fed, right, or things of that nature. That would seem to be unlikely. What we are likely to see is a short-run aggregate supply curve shift as well. As these prices are decreasing, we, would, we could see some changes, right? We would see some changes in uh, in in the short run aggregate supply. In essence, the same thing that we're thinking about here. Expectations would change uh, as well, and so we might see because those because those businesses are now seeing that individuals have less discretionary money, they are going to lower their prices as well on things, right? And so they're going to lower their prices of goods and services, and so we might see this kind of change in the short run. Ag aggregate supply curve. And that change would then move us back down here to this point, which is this would be kind of price level three. We would see extra decreases in the price level because we would see a readjusting. This over here would be deflation, right? We would see deflation as a result of all of this if there's nothing else that's changing in the economy. But we would see the same level of output as a result. So there would be no there would be no change in real output as a result of increases in taxation. What we would see though is the we would see businesses then readjusting, which would bring us down. We would see a decrease in the price level, right? This price level we would see as decreased, but output would remain likely unchanged. These models can be a little confusing. It can be a little difficult. I'll also just note there's a lot of debate about what goes into the aggregate supply and aggregate demand models. And so that's why I kind of mentioned over here that we can see a lot of different responses. And you can get to a lot of different responses. What I've tried to highlight is kind of the normal way that this is explained, the normal way that we think about it, which is really with expectation changes. Businesses will change their expectations as a result of the shock. And we will then return to our normal long run uh, kind of natural level of, of output. The only thing that would change that, that would change this long run aggregate supply curve, is if we have some sort of kind of big technology change or some sort of huge discovery that is going to uh, just permanently increase the level of output uh, that the economy, that our inputs can produce. So just a few ways to think through shocks to aggregate supply and aggregate demand on these markets.